Okay, we're going to work on this reel here. It's the, the dirtiest of the four. It's important to, when you're using your reel to use the neoprene pouch as much as possible, whether you throw it underneath the reel when you lay your, your rod on the bank, or uh, perhaps even if you can get the time to or get in the habit of sliding it in the pouch. You know, take, take as much care as you can. It goes a long way. So the, the first thing you'd want to do is if your reel is really dirty, you can see that there's a lot of dirt in, in here. And uh, you, you'd really want to try to take like uh, soapy water. It's the best thing, so that way you don't you don't get into uh, solvents or solvents can break down monofilament and fluorocarbon. So you know using those types using solvents will will break down your line. It can also potentially eat it or finish. It may not take the anodizing, but if you have if this is a uh, painted on text. It could possibly remove that text or discolor it, or it may even d discolor the uh, the anodizing. So just take care. What I've done is I just mixed uh, probably about an ounce of Dawn dish soap with with about a two quart or about a quart of water. And what you do, it's like being at a car wash with your car. You take and and spray and just hit it with the with the wash. Starting from the top, work it down, and what you're doing is you're flushing out the larger particles. It's just washing out onto the ground. Okay, we're gonna let this sit for a couple minutes, then we're gonna follow it up with a with a shop, soft shop rag. Uh, I like to use these blue rags; they're they're durable and uh, they're they're pretty much lint free. Uh, they're they're more lint free than a to, uh, a regular paper towel, and uh, it, it helps for cleaning uh, cleaning a reel. I also wanted to comment that I left the, the, the hub on this reel, and the reason why I left it on was just in case there was a little bit of dirt and grime on it, but at the same time, I wanted to just flush the, flush the dirt down the reel. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start wiping down the, the inside of this back plate. Start from the top. I, I like to hold it downward. I'm just start from the top. And every so often, you can see that there's a little bit of dirt on the on the towel. Every so often, go to a clean part of the towel, just so that way you're not taking and rubbing that dirt or or, or small stone or, or along the back plate. Okay. Now, if you if you wanted to go in great detail, you can remove some of this, but you can also just rotate it, and and you know it allows you to get into the different areas. I would only recommend removing it if it's not functioning. The further you take a reel apart, the more likely something can get damaged or, or you know, possibly even losing parts. So, Yeah, the next thing we're going to do on the micus is we're going to separate the hub from the back plate. We've already went ahead and determined that there's there's the potential that there is Loctite in there. Just under the the torques that you should be able to use to, to remove this screw, it is not removing. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat it up with the soldering iron and, and hopefully remove this machine screw. And really, you know, if you're if you're having to apply more torque than than that right there, you, you, you should stop and and heat it up and see if it's locked tight you these small allen allen screws you can really strip them out in a heartbeat and then it just becomes a, a nightmare you'd end up having to it would be advised at that point to send it to a, a machinist um, to have that repaired so we're going to take the, the soldering iron just heat up the, the screw we're going to hold it on there for, for a while. Okay, we went ahead and uh, left this on there for about a minute. Always, when you're done using a soldering iron, make sure you have it in an ashtray or something that does not catch fire. We'll take the Allen wrench and insert it back in. Make sure that it's fully seated down inside that, inside that screw. You're going to need all the torque you can get. And just begin to rotate it.
Okay, we've backed the, the screw off. It's it's very free now. You can see in there that there is there was Loctite in there. So, you know, we were able to successfully remove the screw without damaging anything. And from there, the micus is there. There, I've I've seen in one instance where the hub was seized to the shaft. Hopefully, this isn't the case in this on this particular reel. But you just like like as if it were a spool. You would pull it off. Let's see if it's not just locked tight in there. Taking a dental pick and I'm just picking it out of the little crevice right there. And with the what I mean by the crevice is the the, the lead ends between the bearing and the shaft. Okay, we've we've taken the the machine screw off the shaft. We've cleaned all the Loctite out of the out of the front of the shaft. This this hub is not coming off. So this this potentially may be an issue that someone would run into. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through what I've done on the last one. And what we do is we take and heat up the shaft with the soldering iron. And then I've machined a, a makeshift bearing puller that fits on the Micus hub. So that way you can pull it off. It's probably important to uh, point out at this point that if you're an owner and you're in your you know your shop and you get to this stage and you don't have the means to to have a bearing puller like that or, or the ability to make one that it's probably time to consider bringing it to someone knowledgeable that would be able to right. do it for you and and here at your shop you uh, you do maintenance on all kinds of reels correct so it's a uh, it's a situation where they may need to contact you if they yeah. want to go to this next step for cleaning and so forth yeah what we're gonna do at this at this point is we're gonna see if we can get the hub off if we can get it off with ease with the with the puller we're gonna go ahead and do so if it does not come off we're, we're not going to um, the reason why is because the we don't want to want to risk damaging the bearings or the hub that are in there uh, in in what we're trying to accomplish here as a real maintenance video uh, the last time I, I did this I had to I, it took probably three to four hours and uh, I pulled the hub off I got the I got the outer bearing off with the hub and I had the other bearing seized on the shaft and I carefully ground with a die grinder and a very small stone ground had to grind the race in two points to get it to relieve to get it to come off the shaft and that's a lot more than the average guy just trying to yes. clean his reel is going to do at his home so yeah and you can you know the other thing too is with the grinder if you, if you slip once you can put a nice heavy nick in the shaft and it could either change the value of your reel or cause you to need to get a, a shaft and just compound the issues that you're dealing with way past the maintenance phase yes. here. Yeah. You know, another consideration, you get to this point and if your bearings are operating properly and you've done your your uh, due diligence as far as cleaning, you just put that uh, screw back in and tighten it down and leave right. it like that. Okay, we're going to remove the soldering iron from the from this hub. I'm going to place this on here. I'm going to use a the existing screws. 